Kia ora koutou katoa. Welcome to this second Tasman District Council webinar on Aureri Ki Uta, Aureri Ki Tai, Tasman Environment Plan. Today I'm joined by Barry Johnson and Jeremy Butler, who will be doing a short presentation on where we are up to with the development of the plan and the topics that we are currently asking people to give feedback on. Barry is the Environmental Policy Team Manager and Jeremy handles transport policy and also leads the team working on policies for urban and rural areas, natural landscapes, and a long list of other areas. We'll also be joined for the question and answer session by um, Mary, and Mary Honey is responsible for the towns and local centers and terrestrial biodiversity portfolios. <clears throat> Feel free to type in any questions that you have as we watch the presentation, and we'll either answer them as we go or address some of them at the end. I'll now pass you over to Barry and Jeremy to take you through the key aspects of the TEP discussion document. Yeah, sure. Good evening, everyone. Um, look, thanks for taking time to uh, come and listen to our presentation and hear about what we're consulting on um, on the Tasman Environment Plan. So just to take you through uh, what we're going to talk about tonight. So we'll provide a little bit of context, bit of background, a um, bit of a changing environment as far as planning and resource management goes at the moment. Um, and then um, I'll cover that and then Jeremy will take you through the actual consultation material. So um, the three discussion documents or the three areas that we're consulting on um, our managing Tasman's environment and development. Uh, we have a series of information uh, pamphlets and a series of questions that we're seeking feedback in relation to Tasman's towns and villages. And uh, briefly touch on the third uh, area of our consultation, which is around coastal environment and freshwater, uh, which is subject to a separate uh, webinar on the 23rd of November. So just to take you through so just in terms of background so uh, there we go there's some faces to the names um we don't have lisa on tonight but there's myself jeremy and mary beyond later to answer questions um and just on that uh, if you do have any questions uh, please use the q a function rather than the chat function and we will go through those and we'll endeavor to answer um all the questions uh live now if we can and if we can't then we'll, we will certainly try to get back to you with answers if we don't have answers straight away so in terms of just a little bit of context um around what is um tasman environment plan Aureri Kiuta, Aureri Kitai, mountains to the sea um so it's a resource management plan or their combined resource management plan under under legislation whether that's the rma or the future stuff but currently we're working under the resource management act and it will combine the regional policy statement and the resource management plan uh, and you'll see that will be informed by the future development strategy we have announced some tasman future development strategy that was recently adopted um, in in august and the plan will also Tasman Environment Plan will also be um, informed by structured plans. We are currently working on a, a structured plan with the Mapua community for Mapua, and we are commissioning some work to do a, a similar exercise for Richmond and then following that Takaka as well. So, yep, um, councils are a, a creature of statute, and we have a, a number of strategies and plans that interact and, and overlap, but we're very much focused on those that are circled in red at the moment. So, and I guess the other part to be aware of too, in terms of where we come from. So we currently have uh, the Tasman Resource Management Plan and the Tasman Regional Policy Statement. Uh, we have, a, or the government imposes through the RMA an obligation to review plans every 10 years. Um, the TRMP, as it's known, ha um, has been subject to a program of rolling review. Uh, so it was initiated in the early 90s off the back of the RMA, uh, it's a first generation plan. Parts of the plan are still very old, but plants, the parts of the plan are very new as well. And through our review processes, uh, we've identified that uh, there are bits of the plan that are good. And if they're good, we don't need to fix them and we'll carry those through as much as we can into the new Tasman environment plan. 
Um, there is a number of national policy statements and other national directions and case law uh, that isn't reflected in the current Tasman Resource Management Plan. And so when developing the new Tasman Environment Plan, we will carry those over as well and address those uh, through the new planning, uh, the new planning instrument. And as of, uh, as of Tuesday, we now have two new pieces of draft legislation or two bills that have been introduced that will replace the RMA, um, the Strategic Planning Act and the Natural and Built Environments Act. So they will have an impact on the work we're doing. Um, we will have a replacement for the future development strategy. We'll have a regional spatial strategy, uh, which um, we do have the bones of regional spatial strategy through our future development strategy, um, and that will morph over time into an RSS, but obviously there's a lot more components and moving parts to the, to the regional spatial strategy. Um, the Tasman Environment Plan will be one part of what will now be a combined plan with Nelson under the new legislation. Um, the work we're doing at the moment and the, the material we're consulting on through this through this consultation is critical, and it's, and it's a critical input into the new plan. Uh, we're talking about issues and options. The environmental issues will always be the issues and the options we have at a, at a, at a broad scale uh, won't change in terms of addressing those environmental issues and, and realising the, the outcomes that our communities want for, um, for the Tasman environment. We will still have structure plans as well, um, and they will go to inform the, the environment plan. So, so while the future is a little bit unknown at the moment in terms of when and how we might develop, and draft the new plan. The work we're doing at the moment is certainly essential and, and, and a cornerstone to what we need to do to, to develop the new plan. In terms of timing, uh, we started the review of, the, of the, uh, the TRMP, the Tasman Resource Management Plan, late 2018, early 2019. Uh, we did a, what was called an efficiency and effectiveness review of of the, of the current plan to work out what was working, uh, where the gaps were, what needed to change. Um, in 2020, uh, we, we went out with the work that we'd done um, to confirm the issues. Uh, we had a pretty good idea from the analysis that we'd done and through various consultations from the TTOE who into generational strategy through the LTP um, and a number of other exercises, we're pretty clear on what we thought the big issues were for Tasman. Uh, that round of engagement in 2020 confirmed that and also we saw from the community any feedback on was there any issues that we had missed uh, through our own work and um, was there anything else that, that the community wanted us to include in that. So we got a lot of information, a lot of feedback uh, through that 2020 process. Uh, we've been busy since then working on um, uh, you know, confirming those, those issues, but also working up a range of options for how we might address those issues and ensure that we, we implement national policy. And so what we're coming to you now through this consultation and also a second consultation in mid-2023 is, is, testing, is testing the options we have for addressing those issues. In some places we have preferred options and others um, we don't, but it's really critical that we get the community feedback at this stage um, so that we can we can firm those up. And running in parallel to, to this is, is our work directly with EWI. So um, we work directly with EWI. We have a, a policy working group that, that we work with. Um, so there's two parallel streams, essentially. I work directly with EWI and, and then um, as a component of, of Tasman's work, working with Tas Tasman, working with its communities to, um, to input into this process as well. So once we get through this, um, we'll have the feedback we need to, to develop what we think are the final recommendations that will then form the nub of the new plan so that we could then go away and draft the new plan, assuming um, that's the process that we have under the new legislation. So that's where we're at at the moment. Um, just uh, before I hand over to, over to Jeremy to talk about the actual consultation material, um, we do have three discussion documents. They're online, um, they're hard copy, uh, we really would encourage you to, to have a read of those, take some time to, to absorb those. You can provide us feedback um, online um, and we'd prefer that. Or in the centre of those documents, there is a series of questions that you can pull those out, um, fill them out and send them back to us so that we have that information. So, right, that's enough from me. Um, what I'll do now is I'll hand over to, uh, to Jeremy Butler to take you through the, um, through the discussion documents. So, thank you. Thanks very much, Barry. Uh, yeah, and good evening, everybody. Um, 
Uh, Barry's controlling the slide, so I'll be I'll be asking him to flick through as we go. Um, so uh, we'll just go to the next slide. Thanks, Barry. Uh, so yeah, the first uh, document that we'd like to uh, work our way through is uh, the uh, Managing Tasman's Environment and Development, and this is really our lead document, which uh, covers a broad range of aspects of the TEP. Uh, it's, a, it's a wide set of, of policy that um, covers right right through um, the breadth of, of matters that we cover in Tasman. So if we go on to the next slide, we'll have a look at those. Uh, the first topic that, um, that the dis main discussion document goes through is the regionally significant issues. So uh, these are issues that would normally be found in our regional policy statement or our RPS that Barry mentioned earlier. Uh, that RPS will be combined for the purposes of the Tasman Environment Plan that will be combined in. So we're, uh, part of the job is to look at what are our regionally significant issues. And these are really big issues that cover the whole of Tasman or that they have a really, really significant impact on our environment. Uh, we've got a list of them already. Uh, so just for the purposes of brevity, uh, well, I've just included the new ones that will be proposed to be added. Uh, and they are climate change, uh, which is obviously a, a, a key area uh, that we need to be looking at. Urban growth and infrastructure, which has uh, come up in recent years, of course. And community well-being. Uh, now, as I say, in the discussion document, there's more commentary about these, uh, as well as a list of what our current regionally significant issues are. So the next slide, please. And another matter that uh, is covered in the discussion document is uh, our outstanding natural features and landscapes and the coastal environment and coastal natural character. Now, many people may have been involved in this, or you might have seen the publicity we've had around this. It's been a really big project for uh, several years now, really, and that's looking at our really precious landscapes uh, um, and, and places that we have in Tasman, uh, which... Uh, are required under the legislation to have a level of protection. Uh, and so it's a it's been a big project of firstly identifying where these areas are and then secondly coming up with a framework for how they are to be uh, well how they are to be protected but also what they can be used for. Uh, so you'll find in the discussion document there are concept rules for earthworks and quarrying and mining. Uh, buildings and structures, and for plantation forestry. So essentially, that's uh, putting so putting just starting to put a framework around what kind of activities may or may not be appropriate uh, in some of these uh, really really special places that we have in Tasman. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, next thing you'll find is that we uh, cover over the urban areas and the rural areas of Tasman. Uh, for the urban areas, uh, Mary's really led the work on this. Uh, so um, we've, uh, it's great to have her along for any questions we've got, uh, because obviously our urban areas are really, really central to a, a lot of the uh, places and the way we live. Uh, the the issues that we've identified uh, in the work that has been done is that we're really short on a, a variety of places to live. Um, we've got a lot of one sort of type of, of home, um, but people are looking for a variety of homes. And so we need to look for ways where we can uh, provide that wider variety. Uh, and the same goes for business sites as well, uh, providing a wider a, a, a variation and um, a selection of business sites. Affordability is a really key aspect, of course. Uh, providing enough homes is what keeps affordability uh, or keeps homes affordable, that is. Uh, so the growth is something we really have to provide for in order to keep homes affordable. Uh, accessibility is an important aspect too, with uh, 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 um, but uh, with from homes and uh, to get around towns and the, the accessibility both to individual sites and around our urban centres. Um, then supporting reductions in carbon emissions. Now, of course, this is uh, something that we've had to turn our mind to relatively recently, but it's uh, the way our urban areas are shaped and the way they function is a very, very uh, strong determinant of our carbon emissions. So and that, there's a lot of work that council is doing that area too around our transportation systems. And finally, the resilience to natural hazards. Some of our towns and villages are more uh, vulnerable to natural hazards than others. And so uh, those that are uh, lower lying are more susceptible to coastal uh, sea level rise. So that's, again, something we need to be considering in our urban areas and developing policy for how we respond to those. So we ask a number of questions in the discussion document on those aspects and how we how people think we should be able to respond. Uh, for our rural areas, uh, we have done some recent work, as Barry mentioned, some of our plan is quite recent. Uh, we did the recent rural review that some may have been involved with. And uh, so 
the rural areas have had some policy attention recently, but there's still some areas we need to look at. And one of the key areas is how we balance rural living uh, with reduced carbon emissions. So we have got good evidence that uh, living in rural residential locations that are out and about, lifestyle blocks, if you like, uh, do produce a lot of uh, carbon emissions, or that, well, they produce a lot of vehicle kilometres travelled. Uh, and as a result of that, currently, there's a lot of emissions. So uh, while there is a call for more rural living, we have to balance that against carbon emissions. And that's something we need to work through and get feedback on. Uh, accommodating workers uh, in the rural environment is important. Living with quarries, they're a particularly tricky aspect uh, in the rural environment and and commercial activities how can we or should we be accommodating commercial activities uh, and what might be appropriate and then for anyone that's interested particularly in the rural three zone which is a, a, a specific zone that Tasman has um, that some may be aware of that sits between uh, about the end of the Appleby Strait and Tasman Village uh, on the coastal margin there it's um, there's quite significant policy shifts that are being proposed there as well so if you're interested in that happy to answer any further questions or take a look in the discussion document okay next slide please so then there's a bunch of other policy areas that uh, are covered in the discussion document too, uh, and that I've listed them here. Light, for instance, uh, what's appro what appropriate limitations on light glare between properties, uh, but also what are some rules that we might be able to look at to protect the night sky. That's something that came through in our first round of consultation back in 2020, that that was an important uh, uh, outcome for people. Signs, uh, do we have in our environment have we got uh, too many signs uh, not enough signs to support businesses and the economy uh, or is it about right we're looking for that kind of feedback notable trees and historic heritage uh, the plan protects uh, certain trees and it protects heritage buildings that, that are listed uh, we're actually asking for nominations for additional trees or heritage buildings that may be appropriate for further protection in the plan uh, energy and infrastructure, so we're looking at ways that we can support renewable energy in Tasman. Um, we're looking at ways to protect infrastructure, that's that's critical as well. And finally, transportation. Uh, transportation is a big topic, as you can imagine. The, the council does a lot of work on its transportation system, and so this really relates, I guess, to how, uh, how, how people access their properties uh, and how we um, work with communities uh, and also some of the aspects around private land in, in terms of car parking and in terms of uh, facilities for supporting walking and cycling. What can we do in that space? Okay, so moving on to our um, our one pages. Uh, so that was the, the main discussion document. And then we have a series of one pages that we've produced for each of our towns and villages. And, and again, this is where Mary has, has put in a huge amount of work to, uh, to, to develop and go through each of our towns and villages and uh, come up with essentially a scorecard. So we'll go to the next slide. Uh, Mary's uh, worked her way through a, a wide range of aspects such as for each of our towns and villages, and I think there's about 16. Uh, what we know, uh, what are the iwi interests and values, uh, what's currently planned by council in our long-term plan, uh, noting that that is up for review soon, and so that may uh, change, and there may be reprioritization of what is being planned by the council, uh, what the community has told us through our initial engagement, but also through the engagements we have for the LTP, and then finally, uh, what, are, what issues have we got in each of our towns and villages? What opportunities are there for change in the future? And what are those policy directions we should be moving towards? And really, uh, the outcomes that we've identified for all of our towns and villages, uh, there's some things that they have in common, and certainly working with our iwi partners and what their aspirations are um, for the, the, the places they live and the, and the land they own, and as well as the outcomes that they see as being appropriate and important. Uh, we need to implement the Nelson Tasman Future Development Strategy. That's been a big uh, effort, which, as Barry mentioned, has been uh, adopted this year, uh, and that identifies our future growth areas. And so uh, the next stage of the Tasman is to uh, implement the, the zoning through the Tasman Environment Plan. The FDS doesn't do that on its own. It actually needs to be uh, implemented through um, the Tasman Environment Plan. Climate change mitigation and adopt adaptation. Uh, so in terms of reducing the carbon emissions from our towns and villages through uh, a wide range of mechanisms, but also adaptation, uh, it's, it's climate change is going to be with us and the hazards and difficulties that arise from it are going to be with us. So we need to adapt our towns to the future too. Uh, and then we've recognised that uh, towns, the very nature of them is going to need to change in some ways because uh, retail 
activities will be under pressure. People aren't buying as many things from um, from shops anymore. Uh, a lot of it's going online. So towns need to transition to become more um, experiential. They need to be places where people uh, go for experiences rather than just to buy stuff. So uh, that that needs there needs to be a shift there as well in our, our towns. And finally, the connect connectivity is an important aspect, and that's connectivity between uh, towns and villages, but also within them uh, and, and the way people get around. Okay, so this is a list of the towns and villages that we have uh, in Tasman. Um, uh, that, that, uh, there's a couple there I've just drawn attention to, and that's because we haven't produced a one-pager for those ones. So Mapu and Ruby Bay is a little bit of a... a that there's a lot of work going on there at the moment because uh, there is a 2010 structure plan and we're currently uh, in the early stages of a review of that structure plan. So really we're going to be working with the Mapua community in a lot more detail anyway uh, and, and having uh, public engagement that's focused on reviewing that structure plan. So uh, that would sort of supersede uh, the, uh, pro providing a one pager now. Um, so we're going to have more detail on, on that program. And Pohara is a, uh, a new small coastal town which we haven't previously included in our list. It was previously part of Golden Bay East. And so uh, we've had a wee bit of a change of structure there. So we've pulled Pohara out as a, 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 a coastal town in its own right. And so we've got some additional work to do there really to look at what the issues are and what options we have there and develop up that, that work that we already had in place for the other towns. Uh, so, But for all the rest, uh, there is a one-pager. Um, that, that covers each of those. Now, uh, one thing I should note is that if any of the attendees have a particular interest in any one of those towns, I'm more than happy to talk specifically about uh, what we've got for those. So either use the Q&A or the chat function just to, just to let me know which towns or villages you're particularly interested in, and then I can give them a bit more attention uh, um, as we go on, and I can come back to those shortly. So if we go back to, go to the next slide, please. Okay, so then uh, the last topic is the mountains to the sea. So um, I'll, I'll just going to very briefly touch on this before we come back to any of those towns and villages that people are interested in or um, or start the Q&A session. Uh, mountains to the sea is a, uh, a different strand of work, which is, uh, there's a, a program, actually go to the next slide, Barry, and explain it. Uh, it's a, from, from the um, directions on the freshwater program is that we have quite a, a quite a specific program of work and the first stage of that is really to identify what is the vision and what are our values for our freshwater and our coastal water and so uh, this aspect is, is actually we need input from uh, the public and about what, where are our freshwater management areas how do we define those and what are the values we assign to those freshwater bodies and that's a really important aspect and it'll set the the basis really for a lot of the freshwater work we have going forward. So there's going to be a specific uh, webinar on this. Uh, it was actually just on the previous slide. I might get Barry just to jump back to that. Um, there was a previous slide, uh, yeah, a webinar on the 23rd of November at seven o'clock. So if you're particularly interested in this issue around freshwater and coastal water, then I encourage you to get involved in that uh, webinar and uh, and um, that will take you through that in much more detail. Lisa McGlinchey will be involved in that to, um, to talk through that in much more detail. Otherwise, pick up a copy of the, um, or go online to see the content that we've got uh, on the Mountains to Sea document. And that's the, the website there. And as I mentioned, there's an interactive map where you can drop pins and identify what are the values you associate with the water bodies. And that will really form an important core for the rest of the freshwater management program. Uh, so... Okay, so someone's uh, just jumping over to the questions there. Someone's mentioned about uh, towns and villages that are Brightwater and Richmond. Uh, so um, if I I'll just speak briefly to, uh, oh, and Hope as well. Yes, so Hope is, um, Hope is a, a, a borderline. Uh, we have to got a set of criteria that we, uh, that we use for identifying what is a town or village. Um, Hope has some aspects, but... Um, really it's been considered as part of the Richmond whole. So uh, if, if I just talk about those for a minute, um, some the, the person who, who mentioned that may well have be aware of the Reimagining Richmond South project, and it's probably a good opportunity just to give an update on that. Uh, that uh, program has been paused a little bit, or at least seriously slowed down uh, into 2023. And uh, the reason being that we 
uh, need to focus on the Richmond footprint as it is at the moment, so the current urban area of Richmond, and um, that's because there's a uh, there's a really important element that we of that we heard back from the public around growing up rather than out. We need to really concentrate on intensification. We need to uh, grow the. Uh, Richmond Town Centre as much as we can and look at ways we can do that. So we're focusing on how we can work on Richmond Central uh, first and then on a, as we go forward we'll then be able to continue the program of uh, Richmond South Hope area. So that's sort of where that's up to. Uh, in terms of um, Brightwater, uh, excuse me I'll just jump back to my um, information I've got because I don't know it all off by heart. Yeah so for Brightwater uh, Brightwater, there's a range of, of aspects to Brightwater uh, around um, industrial activities. Uh, it, it does have a number of industrial zoned areas that are sort of scattered throughout the town. Um, I would also note that Brightwater had a recent plan change, um, and Mary might be able to help me out with, with when that came about, and uh, I'll get Mary maybe just to speak further just in a second on this. Um, but there is so many of the, the usual aspects that I've mentioned before come into Brightwater that there's a, a low variety of housing. It's very much um, one housing type. And so really working on that variety of housing is an important aspect. Um, there's a chance that Brightwater could lose its distinctive character as it grows and uh, and its identity and sense of place. So it's something we need to work on there is just uh, building the sense of place for Brightwater. Um, and then, of course, there's uh, challenges around Brightwater in terms of a, a commercial centre with leakage to Richmond um, and uh, and how we address that and try and build on the commercial centre of Brightwater. So, so that's the kind of thing you'll find when you look into the um, into the one pager, as well as some some key questions for Brightwater around what kind of density we should be looking at in the future uh, and how we might support density uh, in and around the town centre. And I can't remember which other one was mentioned. I think it was Richmond itself. So, and I've sort of addressed that. So, um, uh, uh, with letting you know about the the detailed work that we're going to be doing for Richmond. So, okay. So, I think that's probably um, enough from me. And I think uh, Andrew, and this is anything I haven't covered. Should we go back into the Q and A? Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for that, um, Barry and Jeremy. Um, oh. Some good information there. Me, me, just sorry, just before I do, uh, Mary, uh, you might have any other aspects to cover just on on Brightwater, since we've got one of the listeners who's particularly interested in Brightwater. Is it? Oh. <clears throat> yes, sure. Well, Brightwater is particularly fast growing, and um, as everybody probably knows, is subject to flooding and surrounded by productive land. So the um, FDS has really provided for growth options in Brightwater and Brightwater has a plan change, the growth plan change happening right now to implement um, some of the FDS recommendations. So there, there, is, um, there aren't a lot of commercial services in um, Brightwater and it's, it's largely been a commuter town because it's close to Richmond. So if more and more people live there, some thought needs to be given to really consolidating that centre and increasing the number of co commercial services in Brightwater so people are close to them and they don't have to drive or commute into Richmond. Um, so Brightwater is definitely a, 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 growth, a, a growth town, as really is Wakefield, and have been treated that way by the Future Development Strategy. Does that help a bit? Mm, thank you, Mary. Yeah, thank you for that, Mary. Um, and thank you to Barry and Jeremy for that presentation. Hopefully it covered quite a bit of what you're interested in finding out about the TEP. Um, just one thing that I like to add when discussing um, this stage of developing the TEP is that it really is a once in a generation opportunity to have your say on how the region develops. Um, I think regional authorities tend to do this sort of exercise about once every 20 years. So it really is a, um, a good opportunity to provide feedback, which is going to um, impact the region for many years to come. Um, so we'll jump to some of the questions that have come through. Uh, there's a question here specifically for you, Barry. Um, you say there is ongoing engagement with EWI. Can you please elaborate on exactly how this works and which Titai Ihao EWI you are engaging with and what their priority issues are? Uh, yes, certainly. Um, 
So we have uh, a working group with, with iwi. It involves um, all eight iwi of Te Tau Ihu um, and um, a runanga of Naitahu, Ngāti Waiwai, uh, down in the Bulla. So we have a Tasman Environment Plan policy working group uh, that all iwi uh, uh, contribute to. And we have regular hui uh, based on different topics as we work through the topics. Um, then we work directly with iwi to discuss um, iwi's issues um, and concerns. Uh, iwi themselves have gone through uh, the list. We have 23 different topics that make up the, the Tasman Environment Plan. And each of the eight iwi has gone through and indicated to us what are their priorities um, that they want to work with um, work with us on and that's from you know holding the pen to help us draft the draft the plan through to just keep us informed and it varies from different iwi um and and just on that so we work as i said with representatives or potaio from each of the eight uh, iwi trusts we also work directly with mana whenua kemahua in golden bay which represents uh three iwi in golden bay um I guess in terms of priority, clearly fresh water is a is a priority for all for all iwi, uh, and we have a we have a separate initiative which uh, Tapuna Kurero, which involves the three Tita Ihu councils and um, eight iwi, and we're working um, collaboratively on that to implement um, aspects of Tamano Tawai and the national policy statement for fresh water. So lots going on, um, and and lots going on in in the iwi space as well. And I see there's a second question there too, so I might just I might just cover that off while I'm here. Yeah, go for um, it, Mary. So it says, can you speak to the resilience to natural hazards? Uh, this always seems to focus on low lying areas and sea level rise, but as we saw the other month, hillside subdivisions are also very vulnerable to slips damage. Will the discussion be wider than sea level rise? Uh, yes, definitely. So um, it seems that the, the, the viewers are aware that we have a coastal hazards project at the moment, um, and that's taking up our hazards planners time, um, all, of it, all of their time pretty much at the moment. Now we're aware there's a lot of other hazards. There's, there is liquefaction, um, you know, there's earthquakes, there's land subsidence, there's instability, there's, there's flood risk. There's a number of natural hazards and we are working through those. They, are delighted, they will be subject of our, of our next round, so in the middle of, of 2023 is when we'll be um, consulting on issues and options around those, uh, certainly in terms of the Coastal Hazards Project and with some of our land stability work, we are pulling together some uh, stakeholder working groups to work through some of those policy issues. And for the low-lying communities, we'll be working directly with all the low-lying communities in Tasman um, to to work out, you know, what are the solutions to, you know, to the long-term um, challenges we're facing. And certainly, in terms of um, in terms of uh, land instability and and landslide risk, uh, that that's a big issue for us. And historically, we've looked at areas which are at risk of slide, of, of landslip. Um, we certainly, and I think that the, the recent floods reinforced this. It's not just the land that slides, but it's where, this, where, the, where, the, where the little slides end up as well. So uh, we are taking a broader view and, and looking at the risk to people and property of, um, of natural hazards uh, more broadly. So huge piece of work, as you can imagine. Um, the other thing is uh, the government has indicated it's going to release some new legislation which will provide councils with more tools around addressing natural hazards, particularly in relation to climate change. Thank you for that, Barry. Um, there's another question that's come in which sort of ties into what you mentioned in that last response. And this question says, the online info around this consultation is quite overwhelming. So much info and a huge number of documents to work through. It will take a lot of work for the community to work through all the material to make coherent and appropriate responses to the consultation. I am concerned that it will put a lot of people off engaging. Can you provide some guidance about how to negotiate the mass of info efficiently and effectively? Um, I'll just comment on that very quickly because I do a lot of work on the comms side of this. And you're right, there is a huge amount of information. Um, I think it can look a little bit overwhelming on the website because we have to try and present it all there. Perhaps the best way to think about this is the three topics that we break it down into. And Jeremy mentioned those. We have the Tasman's town and village, towns and villages. Um, in that chunk of work, you could actually just look at the areas you're interested in. Then we have the mountains to the sea. 
Now we're at a different stage with the mountains for the sea currently because we're not asking for feedback on topics that we've developed and issues that we've looked at. That's much more around the visions and the values that are appropriate to be used in those areas. And then the big chunky piece of work is managing Tasman's environment and development. So that's the one where there is a fair bit to digest and comment on. Um, I would suggest that if it's a bit much doing it on the website, while we prefer you to do it there, the paper documents can be quite useful as well because you can read through those at your leisure. They have the feedback forms in them and you can just scribble answers into the bits that you're interested in. Does anyone else have any comments on that one? Yeah, I guess um, I would add to that. It is, it is a huge amount of information. Um, I would, I would recommend that you focus on those key topics that you're really interested in. Um, it's, it's a reality of reviewing a plan and certainly a unitary plan such as Tasman that covers not only the regional council functions but the district council functions as well, uh, that there is all, there's a lot of information. Um, and if we did it topic by topic, it would take years and years to do it. So unfortunately, it's a reality of, of the resource management system we have and the timeframes we have. Um, and on the face of it or appear under the new legislative system, there may be uh, short timeframes and potentially less opportunity for that community voice to be heard. So that is one of the reasons we're pressing on with, with our consultation um, currently in, in the face of so much change. So it is, it is very difficult, um, unfortunately, and I appreciate that that consultation on our Tasman Environment Plan is only one small um, consultation as well in the context of, of other things that are going on uh, in the community and even within Tasman District Council. There is a lot of information out there. Government's doing a lot of change as well. Um, it is really tough, you know, I appreciate that. I think it's also worth noting that um, this isn't all of the consultation. It's not all of the topics in one go. We are actually breaking this up into individual engagement rounds. So I know there's, um, there'll be more engagement on the mountains to the sea topics, and there's going to be more engagement on some other topics around the TEP towards the middle of next year, if I'm right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, we have another question that's come in, um, which is a really good one from Gillian. Um, are you planning for urban dwellers to have walking access to a park with native trees and bird life? Sure. Uh, would you like me to address that? I'll um, go for it. Yeah. So, uh, absolutely. That's a really uh, key aspect, and, and I guess that's the the feedback we'd like from uh, um, from from people uh, uh, who live in Tasman. Is you know, it depends which town you live in. Um, some towns have really fabulous uh, um, open space uh, areas with native trees and bird life. Um, some areas are. Um, uh, you know, it, it is a bit more of a struggle, and we're and uh, it, it probably comes more towards our um, colleagues in our reserves uh, department because who, who provide these reserve areas and our open space areas. And so we work with them. We work with our colleagues all through council uh, for providing um, th these kind of values that, that people appreciate. So yeah, absolutely. In our um, one of the aspects that we have to do for the TEP is we have to look at all our towns uh, and from a spatial sense. We have to look at the zonings. Um, we have to actually rezone a lot of areas and we, we'll be looking at absolutely those, those aspects of what access is there to uh, the type of facilities you're, you're talking about there? For any new areas uh, that we that that uh, have been identified in the future development strategy as uh, that will be new growth locations, um, then absolutely there'll be uh, where it's appropriate, where it's necessary, uh, there will be open space areas that are provided or required as part of subdivisions that may occur. Um, but yeah, it's it's something that that as urban planners, Mary and I look at uh, and, and we consider how far is it can you walk there can you cycle there to get to uh, th those sort of areas that people really value and making sure that they are common enough and um, and, and spread in such a way that people can get there really easily uh, by walking cycling. Has there been a, um, a significant step up in effort to really link um, walk and cycle ways and green spaces and the walking and cycling strategy um, has makes a specific commitment to try and have a commercial hub within 20 minutes, um, within a 20 minute walk or cycle from a residential area. Mm. So um, we do have to work with our colleagues in, in other departments to achieve this. Mm. 
and and if we've got time, if there's a again, if there's a particular uh, town or location that you're interested in, then then feel free to put that up as well, and we can speak specifically to that um, that town uh, from what we know. Thanks for that, Jeremy and Mary. Um, we've got another question that's come in. What is planned in the way of community engagement on freshwater values and visions beyond the upcoming webinar and mapping tool? Developing these visions for the various FMUs would require sustained and engaged conversations with communities. Is TDC planning to develop these on the basis of a round of written feedback and a webinar, or will there be meaningful conversations and deliberations in the catchments? Thanks. Yes, I can answer this one. So, so yes, this first this is the first round of uh, consultation on these on these um, aspects of uh, freshwater. And you know, if, if the viewer is aware of the of the national policy statement for freshwater management, it prescribes a very uh, well very prescriptive process that councils must go through in terms of setting up a framework for managing freshwater. Uh, the first step is to identify and confirm freshwater management units, which effectively catchments, um, and then um, identify visions and, and the values and the things that people value. So this is very much the first step. Uh, if you tune into the webinar um, on the 23rd of November, then uh, you'll get a lot more detail from Lisa McGlinchey on the process ahead uh, of what we're planning to do. But, you know, uh, we will have, I anticipate we'll have visions for each catchment. Uh, as we go through, so for the uh, seven, seven to nine catchments, we have uh, split Tasman up into. So it is very much the start of the conversation. Um, that is tempered a little bit by the deadlines. So in 2020, um, the government brought forward, the, brought forward the deadline for implementing a national policy statement by seven years. So we have to notify a draft uh, proposed plan at the end of 2024. Uh, so we are or Tasman's work program for implementing the NPS was was uh, reduced by seven years, um, which means that a lot of the science and information gathering that we had planned to inform these processes we're now unable to do um, given the given the constrained timeframes. But we certainly have a lot planned uh, in terms of engagement. Um, and yes, yeah, so uh, tune in on the twenty third for some more information. Thank you very much for that, Barry. Um, I think we've pretty much answered all the questions that have come through. So unless any of the attendees there have any more questions that they'd like to share with us, then um, we're pretty much done here, I think. So um, I'd just like to thank everyone who's um, come along to this webinar for attending. Um, we are very interested in getting people's feedback on these issues and um, options. And there's a number of ways that you can provide that feedback. So one of them is the website. Um, you can email us using the email address that you can see on the screen there. We also have a range of engagement events that we're about halfway through at the moment. And you can find out more details about those on the Shape Tasman website. Um, we're going to places like the AMP show this weekend if it isn't too wet. And we've still got some of the smaller regional towns and villages to go and visit. So you can always come and talk to us at one of those pop-up events. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for tonight. So um, thank you very much for attending. And um, we hope this has been useful. And we look forward to getting some feedback from you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.